Welcome back, beautiful people. Oh, I love spring. It has finally sprung, and many of us are ready to get back outside with all of our gardening tools in tow. Well, Kara recently enlisted the help of gardening guru, Danny Watson, who transformed her backyard from drab to fab. Take a look. I'm so excited because the Danny Watson is in my backyard. He's my gardening angel. Hello, my friend. Good to be here. I'm so excited because if you could see, well, you can see because we're going to show you some before pics right now of what my backyard looked like a mere 30 minutes ago. Um, you have completely transformed it. So let's get into it because I have little kids, so I need something low maintenance, but I also have a newly constructed backyard, so lots of eyesores to hide, namely the pool equipment. So let's talk about some suggestions and what you did. So Kara, you have a lot of shade back here and your trees haven't even leafed out, so it's gonna be even darker than it is now. Okay. So we did some big containers to help hide your uh, pool equipment. I used some big Boston ferns. And you know, we always think of traditionally hanging them, but if you pot them up, they'll get even bigger, hang over the side of the pot, and that's perfect for disguising that, uh, that area that's got all of your equipment. So we put those in and then next, we went over, you have another space there that you had some leftover pots from last year. Uh, most of them had died, mm -hmm. <laughs> so we, we moved them out of the way. And I put in some um, hydrangeas because they thrive in the shade. We put them in some contemporary pots because it matches the style of your house. And I think that that's gonna give you color all summer long. Okay, what do you do? I know a lot of people are sprucing up for spring, if you will. They're starting to move the plants that they took inside for the winter back outside. Any tips or suggestions for doing that? Like what can we save? How do we know when it's best just to toss it? Well, you know, if, if it's in good shape and you actually you have one right here that mm -hmm. you brought outside that we're gonna try to salvage. Okay. So the, the biggest thing is we just wanna clean it up. Okay. Take all this dead off of it. And what we're gonna do with this one, uh, we're gonna put it out by your pool and we are going to um, add some other flowering plants to just kind of dress it up. Okay. So we're gonna take off the ones that are kind of faded. Just okay. like that, we'll All take right. this one too. We're gonna pull back this soil. And by the way, Kara, he's a little bit dry. Okay, well, as, as, time you're, to water him. as you're doing that, it's pluming <laughs> right, it dirt. Is. Okay. So we're gonna pull that back. I'm gonna add a little bit of some fresh soil okay. in here. So okay. these petunias will do okay. Let and, me stop and ask yeah. you, how do you know when you should repot it completely or just add some fresh soil on top? Well, you know, once a plant has really filled up the pot, it will basically start going into decline. Okay. I mean, little by little, the plant will start to die. It'll give you signs and hints that it's unhappy. That's a good time to either move it up to a bigger pot if you want it to continue to grow. If you want it to stay the same size it is, you could take it out, clean off a lot of that older soil and repot it back in the same pot with okay. fresh soil because you know, the nutrients doesn't last forever, the, the soil gets spent. So if you want to keep it in this size pot, just trim it back a little bit and add that new soil, put it back in the same Got pot. Got it, okay. All right, so what I chose here was some white petunias. And these are gonna, I'm just gonna pop this. This is kind of cheating, but you know what? This is the way I like to roll whenever I need instant uh, color. I'm gonna add this uh, white petunia. We're gonna work him right down in here. He will spill over the front of this pot. We're gonna work this around here so these just... That must well. have been the shot from our aerial view, the big plane. Okay, right. this already looks so much right. better. We've got another one here that we're gonna add. And you know what I love about these, um, these cascading petunias? I'm gonna take some of the soil off. We're gonna add him here to the front. So these will basically spill over And then the maintenance on this, Danny, what do I need to keep it looking, to do to keep it looking like this? So um, a little bit of pruning every now and then. If by the end of summer, they will have grown all the way down. So kind of come in with some scissors, trim them up. I would use like a water soluble fertilizer, maybe like once a month and uh, put it on it just to keep the blooms, keep it nice and healthy. And it's also gonna help this elephant here that you have as, a, as your centerpiece. Okay, you mentioned earlier, I have more of a modern aesthetic um, in my backyard. It's very stark looking. So you added some topiaries and some color. Talk about what you selected and why. So the topiaries, I think, really frame up the waterfall that comes off your pool into your hot tub. Um, it's a very simple look, but I think they look nice and sharp. I added some uh, sedum around the bottom that just gives you a bright gold color. 
Um, and again, it just, it's, they're simple, but I think they look so classic around the pool. We also added some other color over by your uh, seating area. I added some Rio Diplodenia on either side of your bench, and those will bloom all summer long. That is the easiest. Listen, if there's one plant here today <laughs> that's my favorite plant, it's that plant because it's just indestructible. You'll be so happy with it. Also added some hyacinths on the middle of your seating area on the cuff table because they have great fragrance and they just scream springtime and Easter. Well, I was going to say, so much... In Atlanta, there's so much tree coverage. So the finding something that thrives in the shadiness, finding something that goes with an active lifestyle, whether it be you have kids or you're just not home that much to take right. care of your plants. Yeah, these are all gonna be varieties that I feel like you're not gonna have to babysit. Um, the nice thing, like back to the ferns, people think ferns are so difficult because they dry out, but moving them into that bigger pot, it keeps them uh, more moist and they won't dry out. And so you don't have to babysit and worry about um, watering them yeah. every day. The bigger the pot, the less you have to water. Well, I was gonna say that was a huge eyesore for me was the pool equipment. And I never thought about taking the ferns off because we so commonly, like you said, yeah. see them in the hanging plants and putting them in those big pots. So Danny, thank you, my gardening angel. He did it again, folks. I mean, it's, I'm never leaving my backyard. I hope you love it. I love it. Oh, I love that segment so much. I took lots of notes. Kara, it looks just beautiful. And Danny, thanks as always.